Hi, I'm Anthony and this is Bob Barker, and today we're going to show you how to make this crosscut sled. Let's get to it. So first I decided just to put the wood on top of my sled, that way I can kind of get the dimensions of it. Now keep in mind this is a contractor uh, table saw, so it's not quite as big as some of the more uh, professional cabinet saws. So of course that means my sled will be a little bit smaller, but I prefer it that way because it's less bulky um, and it'll still be big enough for the cuts that I need to do. So for this project, I am using some scrap pieces. I initially did a really uh, quick lamination to make my cuts, but I soon found out it wasn't very good. So I had to break them down and re-laminate it properly. So I threw a whole bunch of glue on there this time and to make sure I get a good bond on it. Now these pieces right here are both the front and the back fence. And since these pieces are much smaller than when I did the lamination for the tabletop of my workbench, I'm able just to kind of glue them and clamp them and not have to use screws to keep them in place. And you can see to clamp this up, I am using that uh, straight leveler on the back. That way when I'm kind of clamping together, the force of the clamps isn't causing it to bow because it's going with that uh, straight edge. And of course, whenever I'm doing something, Bob Barker always wants to come and help out. Um, for some reason, he just absolutely loves sitting on whatever I'm paying attention to. That way, I have to pay attention to him. He is a very, very helpful shop assistant. And what I'm doing there is just measuring out the piece that I'm going to use for the bottom of the sled. And since I don't have a track saw, I'm still using just whatever straight edges I have to help guide my circular saw to cut them off. So it's on to removing the clamps, which I did add an extra few off camera. And then we can go ahead and just do a quick little mock-up of where the pieces are going to go so I can get a feel for it. Potentially leaving that uh, front side that's closest to me a little bit off to the side, which will help with the extension later. And then for this project, I decided just to get these uh, miter saw slider bars just to give them a try out instead of making my own. But you can easily just go ahead and cut out a piece of hardwood for your miter saw sliders. And these ones do have screws that'll go in through the top, so I'm using the Forstner bit. That way it'll be sunk down beneath the surface there. And so I'm putting the first one on uh, here so the screws are going through uh, the slots that I already made uh, underneath. Um, and then the second slider I'm uh, assembling here. And the nice thing is this is like completely adjustable for whatever width your miter slots are. So just go ahead and put that together and then it has a little uh, uh, screws that you can tighten so it has a good fit with no play in it. So for now I'm only putting on one slider, although two would give it much more stability, but I'm kind of toying with the idea of leaving just one for now so then it can be used on both slots so I can actually make uh, different angled cuts, cuts on the edge of the sled without messing up uh, the opening so it'll stay as a zero clearance on the main portion of the sled. Um, but I'm going to play with it for a little while and see how it feels, and I may just add that second slider later. So I put on the first slider when it was off, but the second one I wanted to do while it was in the slot like this. That way I can make sure everything lines up really well, and if there's any need to adjust, I could always just make the drill hole a little bit larger. That way it has a little bit more play in it until I uh, tighten it down with that screw. This way I know for sure that it's going to be all nice and in a straight line, and it should end up sliding really well. Now I'm going to go ahead and mark the spots for these T-tracks that we're going to insert into the top, making sure not to go over the miter slot so it doesn't interfere with any of your sliders. So here is a bit of a problem. I'm using my router with a three-quarter inch straight bit just to make the dado for it, and you can see I did not clamp that down right, and it just skewed off to the side. But no problem, I had a spare piece, so this time I made sure it was clamped much better and then got a nice straight cut, and you can see the T-Track fits perfectly. And these T-Tracks are made of aluminum, so you can cut them with your woodworking tools. You just want to go nice and slow, and then of course afterwards, it's good just to kind of shave off any burrs there, because it leaves kind of a little bit of a sharp edge. Now the groove for the T-Track is really thin, so that doesn't leave much space for a screw, so I had to take these screws and kind of grind them down to basically almost tiny little nubs, that way it actually will screw in without going below and hitting my surface of my table saw. 
Would have been easier if I had a vice, but I didn't have a vice to do this, so I just made do. Now this would be a little easier to draw the, the holes for these screws if you had like a vex bit, which is like a self-centering bit, but you just be nice and slow and you can do it. And you can see how short those screws are, so to get some little extra strength, I mixed up some quick setting epoxy, that way I can put that down, uh, and then the screws will be more just to kind of hold in place while the epoxy dries. So that way that T-track will, won't be going anywhere. And then I just repeated that same process for the other T-track as well. After that, it's time to get the dado ready for the front fence. And of course, I forgot to turn on my vacuum. So you can see all that dust just flying in my face. I always forget to turn that thing on. Now it'd be easier to do the fence and the extension all in one piece and then cut them down afterwards. But since I was working with uh, some scraps of my, uh, from my workbench, I ended up having to do them individually. It creates a little bit of extra work making sure they line up and fit perfectly, but you can still get it done either way. So next I decided to give a bit of a sanding to the bottom and then apply some of that paste wax. That way I can test everything out and it'll slide uh, nice and smooth. And for the back fence, I wanted to make sure the section where the blade is going to be going through is a little bit beefier. Um, so just for design, I decided just to kind of make a little bit of an, a cut here so there's an angle uh, that it uh, goes up so it has a thicker part just where the blade is. Now this would be much easier with a bandsaw, but I'm a DIYer so I don't have that. So I'm using a jigsaw and my circular saw and putting those together and I can get the cuts that I need. It just takes a little bit of extra doing there uh, to get it done, but eventually it pops right off. And you do have to be careful not to go too far with your circular saw so your cuts aren't visible once you're done with the piece. You don't have to worry about the rough edges because after you're done getting that cut out, you um, can go ahead and just clean it up with a chisel like I'm doing here and then sand it down as needed. And then just to make it a little bit nicer on my hands when I'm pushing, um, I did a round over on the edges of the fence there. I repeated this with the front fence as well. And then put a chamfer bit on the router and ran this along the very bottom of the front edge. That'll create a small channel that'll act as a dust relief so it won't interfere with the function of the sled. Now it's time to attach the fence. Now for the back fence, it doesn't have to be square. Um, so you can just kind of clamp it roughly in place to the back of the wood and then just screw it in and it's fully attached. The front fence you, is a little bit of a different process, however. So for that one, I'm going to put one screw that's going to be the pivot screw and then one other screw on the other side just to temporarily hold it. Now here we're putting it on the table saw and we're going to bring the blade up slowly through there so we can bring the slot and that's going to help us uh, as we're squaring up that back fence. So I'm just using a 90 degree angle here just to get it roughly where I want for the first time. Now, of course, this isn't going to be perfect, but it doesn't need to be perfect. Uh, we're going to go, go back and then fix it afterwards. So we're going to end up using the William Ng five cut method to square this back fence. And if you haven't uh, checked out his videos, it's definitely worth a watch. They're kind of long and technical, but they are awesome and really great detail to learn from. So for this, we mark all the four sides of the, of the board. And then the whole idea behind it is basically you're cutting each side. So after the first cut, you're just turn it and keep on cutting each side until you're back to the original side. And what that does, it amplifies any error in the true square of your, of your fence. So you, what you want to do for that fifth cut, which is the first one that you cut as well, you cut that a little bit thicker. That way you can uh, keep that offset and mark it. That, uh, then what you're going to do is you're going to take that piece and you're going to measure it on each side and you can uh, see the difference and then you use the pivot length uh, as well as the length of your board, the cut length, and then you throw that into a calculation and see how uh, much it needs to be adjusted. Now you can do this by hand, but you can also uh, find a calculator online, which I'll put a link to uh, below that you can basically just put in these numbers and it tells you what you need to do. So for here, I had to adjust it just by a small amount. So I use these feeler gauges uh, to get the amount that needs to be adjusted and I clamp it in between there. Um, and then I go ahead and unclap my temporary screw and then I can move it uh, to meet that adjustment. 
and then I clamp that in and then screw it back down. And with that in place, it should be square, but just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna go ahead and unclamp everything and then just run the five cut method one more time. And here are my results. It's off by two thousandths of an inch and that'll work for me. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and fully secure that front fence, um, drilling out some uh, pilot holes and then screwing it with that tennis ball just slapping me all over the place. Now it's on to the extension. And for the T-Track, I didn't cut this originally because I wanted to just leave it there to help me line everything up. After I get it in place, I will just go and cut the T-Track just like I did the other one. Um, so I'm just kind of getting this nice and tight and using the alignment of the original fence to, to keep this uh, where it needs to be. Um, so then after I had that set up, then I went ahead and cut it and then secured the T-Track just like I did uh, with the other ones. I did, you know, did some epoxy and then screwed it into place. And of course with this one, I can do thicker screws so it's gonna sit much better. And same thing is with this one as well. And what I am doing here is everything is offset just a little bit. So the fence comes off the surface of the bottom of the the sled a little bit just to hold this thing in place and then the track also is a little bit offset so they kind of interlock with each other just to make it easier for this thing to sit together and for the final way to keep them together uh, i'm putting this uh, scrap piece of wood here just flush on the bottom and against the fences and then i'm screwing holes through them and that'll give me a nice mark for the next step which since I want this to be a removable and adjustable piece, um, I wanted to have a way that I could put it on and off easily. Um, so through those holes, I'm gonna be putting some epoxy and then I'm using some threaded inserts. Um, that way I can easily screw th uh, that uh, connector piece on and off as needed. And that tennis ball is still just slapping me around the whole time. I really need to get like a laser pointer for parking in there too. Now these inserts went in pretty well, although I did make a bit of a mess with the epoxy, but no big deal. Then you just wipe that off and sand it down afterwards as needed. So with that done, I'm go ahead and for the first test fit. And I really freaked myself out the first time because I put the wood in backwards because they're not exactly in the same place. And I thought I messed it up, but turned it around and it fit perfectly. And the whole sled stays nice and secure when I can move it back and forth. So after that, it's on to some sanding um, for the surface. Um, just did a little bit of hand sanding. And then of course, just this block here that's gonna go where the blade's coming out just for an extra uh, protection and I was a little impatient so I just used some CA glue instead of some wood glue or anything else there and just kind of push it in place and here's the finished piece complete with the stop block as well as those uh, clamps that go into the t-track so I can keep things nice and secure when I'm using the sled and of course Bob Barker in the background waiting for attention so that's it for today guys I hope you liked the video and I will have some detailed plans available if you're interested in making this particular crosscut sled and I'll see you guys with the next project.